I was born a second child in a family of five children, three girls and two boys. My older sister, Maria, was born with a malformation in her hips that left her disabled for life. From a very young age, I was confronted with a sister who needed assistance, who was uh, limited, who was not independent. But I was lucky enough uh, to be born in a, into a family with two parents who knew how to manage our interpersonal relationship in a way that did not highlight our differences, but rather our potential. You know, when you are a child, you are also cruel and uh, good intentions are not always governed by respect of those with different abilities. I remember that sometimes I was uh, pretty naughty and more than once I made my sister cry. My mother, by her distinct sensitivity for the weaker and an innate sense of justice, did not take long to teach us to see the more positive and engaging aspects in others. In short, since our younger age, we assimilated the principle of complementarity by combining our own strengths with others. But what strengths could have my sister? This is the question. She couldn't work properly. She couldn't run. She had a plaster cast that hindered uh, her to move. She would be a burden in games. No. My sister developed an engaging leadership ability where, I remember, she was the leader of the group in our games. And uh, we didn't mind being bossed around by her. Not always. I must admit, there was no shortage of arguments, but uh, we were children. As we grew up, however, we acknowledged the value of the education that our parents had given us. Appreci um, appreciating the potential of, in others, the possibilities that make them gifted, needed, and treasured. Uh, when the Adventist Possibility Ministries movement arose, almost like an osmosis, I found myself in it, and without any difficulty, I began to offer my support. Adventist Possibility Ministries, APM, is a life transforming ministry. The motto of this ministry clearly states an underlying principle on which its existence is based. All are gifted, needed, and treasured. What I like of Adventist Possibility Ministries is that it is a movement about caring and inclusiveness. It involves education and acceptance for everyone and the development of plans that will help bring about opportunities for involvement and a sense of belonging for the special needs person. Who are these special needs person? All of us that have a, a different ability in one or more aspect of our being are special needs people. Now, I am a pastor and I have been youth leader during about 27 years, from church to division level. I learned a lot by dealing with youth. <laughs> I got from them the sense of justice and a desire to change, a desire to be committed to something that has value, that has meaning, and that arose a desire to reform life around them. One of the goals of this seminar is to engage the youth in a cause, the cause of possibility ministries, trying to recruit them to make a difference in the life of someone who has been uh, marginalized in society maybe in the church, because of some things they cannot do or are not able to do very well. Youth are sensitive toward those who show a lack. It is not true that all youth are arrogant and opportunistic. No, for this reason, we want to invite them to join the Adventist Possibility Ministries. Together, we could commit to change our world. It is a challenge, of course because um, our world presents an alarming situation about youth with a disability. Let me share some data. There is a, an evident lack of empirical research on the prevalence of disabilities among the youth population. The estimated number of children and teens with disabilities between 0 and 18 years ranges between 93 million and 150 million. This is a UNICEF. 
These figures are raw, rough estimates and reflect the insufficiency of data on youth with disabilities, especially in the developing world. Although the actual figures are uncertain, it is clear that individuals with disabilities from a significant propor pro proportion of the youth population in every society is particular. The number of youth with a disability is likely to increase due to the large youth population in most developing countries and to medical advancement, which promote higher survival rates and life expectancy after impairment, causing disease, health conditions and injuries. Youth with uh, disabilities are among the most marginalized and poorest of the world's youth population and are more likely to face severe social, economic and civic disparities as compared with those without disabilities, even in developed countries. For many young people with disabilities, exclusion, isolation and abuse, as well as lack of educational and economic opportunities are daily experience, declared UNICEF. The Convention of the Rights of a Person with Disabilities and with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development are making strides toward the greater inclusion of youth with uh, disabilities in society and development, as uh, well as uh, toward the realization of uh, the human right. As countries continue their effort toward poverty reduction and equitable development, it is crucial that all youth are offered equal opportunities to participate in and uh, contribute to society at all levels, which include youth with disabilities. Well, what can we do? Many times we remain passive, powerless bystanders. But I believe that we can do some things in our little part of the world. Engage you to be a support, even for short contribution. It is better than nothing. And believe me, it could be a good starting point. When Adventist Possibility Ministries does recognize uh, an individual's limitations, it doesn't stop there. Nor does the ministry simply focus on trying to fix a perceived need. Simply put, the person matters. Regardless of what is perceived as a, a disability or a loss, possibility thinking looks for opportunities and seeks to install, uh, instill confidence. The focus of possibility ministries is less about what a person can do, cannot do, the disability, and more about uh, releasing the person from uh, stigmas and marginalization so they and their community experience the possibilities God has placed within their reach. So, people with different ability have uh, the same possibility of all, and we are called to advocate for the recognition of dignity and respect for every person. This helps make possible the discovery of unrealized abilities despite stigmas associated with uh, their disability or loss. We believe in their possibilities. I'm sure that in many cases what creates barriers is not indifference, but lack of knowledge and education in solidarity. Change this attitude on youth and see the difference. I would like to demonstrate this uh, concept with a project carried out in Italy over the last 10 years. The didactic side work, Il Marciapiede Didattico. This is the title. This project was realized thanks to the willingness of a person with a reduced physical mobility to tell his daily experience confronting the reality of simple road transit. Sharing his experience with a reporter of Adventist radio, Voice of Hope, with the support of ADRA Italy and endorsed by the city and the school's authorities, the project was presented in schools with the purpose of informing educating, breaking down barriers to overcome prejudice toward uh, disability and all forms of diversity, and how putting themselves in the disabled shoes. The didactic side work is a modular wooden uh, structure that reproduces a normal city side work with uh, all its difficulties and obstacles, at use of boys and girls provisionally sitting in a wheelchair. It's very nice.
The boys and girls are led by a um, disabled guide who helps them along the route and brings them face to face with the beat reality of barriers, which are not only architectural, but also social. The young people are confronted with several obstacles that may be found on the way by someone on a wheelchair that doesn't, may, doesn't have other option than move on that sidewalk. After this experience, the youth share and reflect for a while on prejudice, diversity, disability, and bullying. And they all express a common feeling. They feel ready to defend the, 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 the right of those who are forced to live uh, these discriminations. The reaction of young people goes beyond the cognitive area and is uh, rooted in the deeper area of social justice. The emotional aspect of uh, identification is a fundamental aspect of the project, which brings out not only the reaction of the young people. <laughs> By grasping the danger that loom a simple work on someone differently able, as a blind, for example, it also helps to disable prejudice, diversity, and discrimination. This is one of the grounds that help young people to develop a sense of contagious solidarity. <laughs> Since we are talking about viruses these days, let us be infected by the right vi virus. Let's talk for a while about disabled prejudice, rising awareness. Everyone has a dignity that should be preserved, a dignity that goes beyond one's physical, ethnic and social state. To break down physical and mental barriers surrounding disabled people, we have to help uh, people to develop empathy and learning to relate to others. This is the point. Considering that prejudice is um, already present in the teenage years, an awareness campaign has to be primarily implemented in schools. Young people um, should be encouraged to live the experience as a dis disabled person. This process is defined as a perspective taking. Rupert Brown, professor emeritus at the University of uh, Sussex in England, explains that uh, prejudice has many causes, but also many cures. From the psychosocial perspective, all the cures come from the idea proposed by Gordon Holport in the book The Nature of Prejudice. So Brown said, social contact is the, is the key. It reduces ignorance, anxiety, and fear of the unknown as it increases empathy. So the didactic side work has precisely the function of educating young people to control those forms of prejudice and intolerance that occur mainly due to the lack of knowledge. When young people can identify themselves with the diversity of uh, others, the seeds of respect, acceptance, and collaboration grow. Another experiment done with uh, young people was to make them experience states of different abilities. In August 2017, at the European Adventist Youth Congress in Valencia, Adventist Possibility Ministry and Adventist Deaf Ministry International proposed an interactive booth. Young people were given the uh, opportunity to experience the feelings of uh, someone with a different ability. By different activities, putting the young people in the condition of uh, experiencing a disability, they were able to better understand the challenges encountered by physical need people. They were invited to play football with uh, blindfolded eyes or to drive along an itinerary in a wheelchair led by a deaf person. It was not a game. You know, sports play um, sp plays um, uh, undoubtedly uh, an interesting role to encourage identification. Apart from team games, which require the essential integration of players, the concept of contact presented by Professor Brown emerges. Through this contact, one opens up to acceptance and uh, resulting empathy. It is essential to know that a similar reaction is also experienced from those 
who experience great diversity. Acceptance and uh, being accepted is not accidental. It requires mutual, mutual uh, consent. My sister Maria overcame the barriers by personally integrating herself into the group of the, of the moment. She did not allow her disability to prevent her from enjoying the joys of group contact. And because of this outgoing and inclusive attitude, she got not only the solidarity of young people, but also their attention and protection. Now, in my footer step, I would like to draw your attention to a survey I carried out among a group of uh, young people regarding the Adventist Possibility Ministries and the 3A strategy. I proposed a series of questions to 10 youth to test their knowledge about disability in general and their possible commitment. When I asked how much do you know about people with disability, their answers were <laughs> honest. They don't know enough about the world of people with disability, denouncing that in general there is a lack of real awareness and knowledge about this population. However, when I asked how do you consider people with disability, the answer were surprising. Um, although they do not know much, they consider disabled people as uh, determined and valuable. They see disability as a potential. Unlucky people with a greater sense of appreciation toward life and definitely gifted, gifted people. Referring to their social cultural contest, I asked which is the impact with the society that disabled have to face. And the answer were eloquent. According to them, disabled people have to face prejudice, indifference, judgment, no inclusion, be considered less capable than normal people. The unawareness of the society, not ready to face concrete needs, discrimination, and so on. So I thought of asking them to be more specific and uh, to express what is the church doing for the people with disability. Hmm. According to their perception, a uh, common thought crossed the answer. The church does not do much. Even one response emphasized that just asking this question put the church at fault because it should be at the forefront of caring for those with uh, different abilities. The example of Jesus speaks aloud. However, they think that um, efforts are being made for better inclusiveness but the lack of disability or disabled people in the community seems to justify that certain passivity and indifference. In any case, there are several cases of churches particularly committed in the field of deafness, increasingly proposing an uh, interpreter for Sabbath morning, and uh, this is also a good promise. The question asked uh, so far were targeting to test their ground and uh, understand how much knowledge there might be among young people about disabilities. It seems that uh, there is a lack of uh, adequate knowledge despite a sensitive desire to know more and to get more involved. So I asked, what do you expect from a ministry like Adventist Possibility Ministry to overcome the above issues? Clear ideas are not uh, missing in their responses. Adventist Possibility Ministry should help to give importance and value to people with disabilities. And this is correct. Try to develop a strategy to break down barriers, not only architectural barriers, but ones that should not be present in the church. A strong suggestion is placed on uh, training pastors first and members later on about the reality of the disabled people. Adventist Possibility Ministry should help young people to act in response to the needs of those who live the, this different reality. And uh, that uh, the door of the church, which at the moment seems to be closer to the disabled, may be open because uh, the disabled recognize that the church loves them. Of course, a direct question could not be missing. What youth 
think about disabled? I quote some answers. They are just like us, but we don't treat them as such. Some show indifference or bullying the disabled. Others show sensitivity and seek inclusion and respect for the right of disabled people. Youth are more aware than adults, but they need support to make the church more accessible and to set a good example to the surrounding society. Education can be the key to eliminate the separation caused by we and the others mindset. Inclusion overcomes these barriers. If we can see the person beyond uh, the impairment, if we place intrinsic value to impaired people, we can start a dialogue which places us all at the same level. We can see disability as an opportunity to engage with that people, avoiding patronizing, encouraging natural interaction as a reward when interacting with the normal people. We cannot change the disability or impairment at least, but we can always find always or find ways for development and new abilities. And finally, a youth with disability answered. What you think about disabled? I don't know. I don't have idea. It would be nice that they take part of Adventist Possibility Ministries. Interesting invitation. After this critical analysis on how youth deal with the issue of a disability, I ask if as youth they would like to be committed in one of the ministries proposed by Adventist Possibility Ministry and what could be their contribution. And almost all their reactions have been positive, showing interest to serve in any sector they were able to serve. And this is very, very encouraging. Adventist Possibility Ministry has issued a challenge through a strategic plan practically targeted on uh, developing a concept inspired by the three A's, awareness, acceptance, and action. I think this concept has been presented more than once, and so to find one more, the con this concept, I invite you to visit Adventist Possibility Ministries webpage. Young people have responded to this strategy in a very concrete way. Ideas are not missing. The suggestions are greater towards making the church attentive and aware of the reality of disabled people through a series of information and training at local level to gain knowledge, trying above all to involve those people who are still in the shadow and make them feel accepted. And uh, the best way is to involve them not only in service activities, but also in leadership areas according to their abilities. In short, the young people seem to have accepted the challenge. For now, these are just the suggestions and promises, but I have no difficulty in thinking that if properly guided, young people are ready to do their part in championing a cause, the cause of Adventist Possibility Ministries, to make a difference in the life of someone who has been marginalized in society, maybe in the church, because of something they cannot do or are not able to do very well, according common standards. Let's invite young people to join Adventist Possibility Ministry and find out how committed they can be by changing the world where they are.